having this guy who chose me and adopted me. Like, no one can take that away. Hi, welcome to Gotta Love Linda. Today, I've decided that I'm going to talk and share my faith journey. So, basically, It'll, I'll be talking about how I came to know Jesus and just about my work with him throughout my life up to this point. So to begin with, um, I grew up in foster care and I'm going to probably make a video about that too. But it was when we were three, me and my twin, when we were three years old, we went to live in a children's home and it happened to be run by a pastor and his wife. Um, but I don't actually remember anything about that. It was when I went, we went to our next foster home in the country. We lived on a farm and that's where I remember meeting Jesus. This was a little Lutheran German community in the hills. And so my foster family um, had a farm and we grew up on that farm from the age of five onwards. So the best gift that my foster parents from there gave us was that they introduced us to Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus as in the Christian God. Um, we went to the Lutheran primary school there. At the time, it was so tiny. There were only 18 of us in the entire school, which was actually really cool. By the time we left, it was, I think there were 31 people, students. And we only had two teachers and it was just the absolute best, best way to grow up in such a tiny school where everyone was related and we were like family anyway. I still remember in grade one, um, the teacher asked us to put our hands up who was baptised and by that stage, Mike and I knew what that meant and I was playing with wooden blocks on the floor and I remember crying because we were the only two kids out of all of the kids there who were not baptised. And next thing I knew, we were getting baptised. So that was a pretty special moment. Um, I'll see if I can put up a photo actually into the video of us on our baptism day. Um, it was a really special day and we were, well, I was so excited because it just meant that this guy, Jesus, who I'd met at school and then at church and Sunday school, he was finally my brother. Like that's how I thought of him when I was a kid. And just this really cool guy who wanted to be my brother and you know, do stuff with me. And I was so excited. And keep in mind like being in foster care, we'd been in care pretty much our whole lives uh, from the age of two, but back then it felt like our whole lives. And so meeting somebody, like meeting, because you know, you don't really meet God like you meet another person, but learning about him, like we just fell in love with him straight away. Um, having such instability in our family, meeting God who was somebody who would, um, who would always be there no matter what, even at such a young age of five or six, made, made a huge difference. It just meant the world to someone like me. So growing up, I loved going to Sunday school. I loved the devotions at school. We always had morning devotions. And as we got older, we actually had to run them ourselves. So we'd get to pick a song and pick a story and I think we even asked some questions of the other kids and it was just really exciting because you know you were the special one for that that morning and um, I just oh, they were my favorite parts of the whole day at school I just loved morning devotions and the, the sing-along song and yeah they were just my favorite times growing up and I think I volunteered more than most to do the morning devotions <laughs> Um, and we had these really cool arch books, which were picture books in um, in rhyme, and they were all Bible stories. And oh, I still, if I had kids today, I'd want them to grow up with these arch books because they were just a bomb. They were so cool. As a kid, your faith tends to be pretty much whatever your parents is. And as you get older, you know, into teenagehood and stuff, you start to take it on as your own. 
So, and it stops becoming something handed down from you from your parents and it becomes something that you choose yourself. And I remember when I was about 12, 11 or 12, one of my foster cousins, um, she was instrumental, hugely instrumental and influential in my teenagehood as um, an older cousin and, well, only a few years older, not much, but enough to make a difference. And I just remember thinking, oh, I just want to be like her. And she used to really mentor me through some of the tough times that we had, whether she realized it or not. Um, she used to give me a lot of Christian music. I fell in love with Keith Green, um, David Meese, Michael W. Smith, all those typical ones that were around back then. Um, I think Carmen even but my favorites were David Meese and Keith Green and I still love Keith Green to this day he's still a massive favorite of mine you know, in terms of Christian music um, but yeah I just always looked up to this particular cousin and her sister and you know she went to teachers college and I used to go you know, we used to write letters to each other all the time and even though she, cause she was living in the city and um, yeah, so we just used to write letters and talk about God stuff, talk about boys, talk about whatever else, you know, it was, she, she was awesome. Um, and now we're both at the same church these days, which is amazing. It's really cool. And I can, you know, watch her kids grow up who incidentally have incredible faith themselves. It's just wow. But I'm not surprised because she is an awesome chick anyway. So I always wanted to be like her and her family. They always seemed to have people over. Um, like as their kids got older, she, you know, the kids would bring home friends and they'd sleep over. And I always wanted to be in that kind of family um, where they just opened up their homes to people. And I really think that's just them being God to people. You know, I don't know. They were just. I, I, they were just so hospitable anyone who needed a bed they seemed to have have room for in their home and yeah I just always really really wanted to be like that when I grew up unfortunately haven't found a man so that's not really happened then but oh well um so I when we were in year eight we did confirmation which is basically it's when in the Lutheran Church it's when a young person does their affirmation of faith and there's a bit of a ceremony and you get to start going to Holy Communion so baptism there's two sacraments in the Lutheran Church one is baptism and one is Holy Communion sorry my eye keeps watering because my fans on um, so baptism is when you can I guess officially be become part of God's family and um, communion is a confirmation is when you can start taking holy communion and so that's basically for those of you who don't know it's basically taking jesus body and blood and at the at the altar of the church each time and for me i just as the wine goes down because in lutheran church we have wine and I can just feel it going down and it, it kind of burns as it goes down because I don't really drink alcohol. But I like that feeling because to me it feels like Jesus is, you know, his blood is inside me cleansing me and, and almost burning away all the badness, all the sins, all the, I don't know, whatever, and making me fresh and clean. And I love that feeling. Um, so communion is pretty cool actually it's it's a big thing and it's just also remembering the sacrifice that jesus did for us in dying on the cross so speaking of which easter times were always a big thing for me i loved easter i'll probably talk more about easter as we get close to it um this year but yeah in in the church easter's kind of a bigger deal than christmas because Easter is when Jesus actually died and rose again, which is the most important thing to know. You know, um, that the fact that he rose again is is the biggest proof that he was God. And, um, 
and yeah he did it for us for me to save me and to save you from death and I mean of course we're gonna die in a human sense but then we get that everlasting life with him where we can just sit at his feet and worship him or you know whatever we don't really know what happens in heaven but I just yeah it's awesome so um, anyway we had confirmation when we were in year eight so we would have been 13 and um, I'll see if I've got a photo of that too I'm not sure if I do or not um, but confirmation yeah I don't know it's almost it's another rite of passage and it kind of feels like I don't know like you're a big kid now <laughs> So with confirmation also came um, us being old enough to go to youth group. So youth was a lot of fun. Um, every second Friday night, all the youth, all the young people kind of from high school age onwards, um, probably up to 20, mid 20s maybe, we'd all get together and every, ugh, sorry, every second Friday night, We'd have a sing song, then we'd have a devotion, the pastor would lead a bit of a study, and then we'd have some business, and then we'd have games or whatever we had planned. Youth was so much fun. I just thrived when I was at youth. I ended up becoming president for a couple of years, I think, and I got really, really involved, not just in our own youth group from our church, but in the Adelaide Hills zone which is like nine, nine churches in the Adelaide Hills. Um, sorry, my eyes just keep watering. It's partly because of my autoimmune disease, partly because of the fan. Um, so yeah, it's the Adelaide Hills zone was the, tw the nine churches, all, all the youth groups. We had, uh, we used to do a lot of stuff together. We'd have balls where we'd dress up and you know, do ballroom dancing, we'd have um, rally nights, challenge nights, oh, rally car racing. Uh, we just used to do so much fun and a lot of camps. Um, and I just loved being a leader in, in the church and just being a youth leader was such a massive thing for me um, in my teenage years. And basically it really was an escape for me. Um, not yeah, it was an escape because my high school years were shockingly awful, which I'll talk about in another another thing. But um, tonight I just want to focus on my faith. So, yeah, it, it, the, the camps and the leadership that I did were just the thing that I think saved me as a teenager. I was pretty boisterous and loud. I'm still really loud apparently, but I personally think over the, my adult life, I've mellowed a lot and I'm a lot quieter than I used to be, but some would beg to differ. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I just was the life of the party and no matter where we were, I was always had to be involved, always had to be in there in the thick of things. Um, but mostly it was just, you know, it was so cool being with just so many other young people who loved Jesus and just had, you know, just good, clean, genuine fun. One thing that I always did as a young person as well was um, I was a Sunday school teacher. So from the age of about 11 for a couple of years, I helped my mum who was a Sunday school teacher and then I had my own class right through to I was an adult. Um, at the first church that I went to downtown, I was a teacher there as well for a year. And then when I moved over to my current home church, um, yeah, I didn't, I don't think I did, did stuff there, but I got very, very heavily involved in so many other things. Probably too many things actually, to be able to do them all properly. Um, and I've real the one thing I've really missed is the youth stuff because I was so so heavily involved in that as um, a teenager and young adult that yeah once I got to this church they all had their own youth leaders and everything already so I didn't really feel like you know there was a space for me there to be a youth leader 
Um, but I did go and lead on a couple of camps, which was good. But um, yeah, I just loved that whole that whole time in my life was just so wonderful and it really counteracted the negative things that were happening in my life at the same time. Mm. In my, I think I was 21, early 20s, I actually did two tours um, that we had running that were called Christ Knows No Distance Tours and what they were, basically a group of young people um, would either tour the state or parts of the country and we would go to a lot of remote areas as well as um, urbanised places, churches and schools and stuff. And we would actually do performances, um, Christian performances, obviously. Um, they were dance, uh, not dancing, they were singing and drama. So I wasn't the, I've always been pretty average singer, but I was one of the people there doing drama and clowning, which was always really fun. So, you know, put on our clown costumes and do balloon making and face painting and whatever else. Um, at some of these places, we did holiday Bible adventures, which we were there for a whole week. So they were usually about three weeks long, those tours, but we covered a lot of ground and developed some friendships that I will have forever. Um, yeah, it was a pretty amazing time being on tour with, um, I did that two years in a row. And yeah, some of those people, yeah, I will always love them. It was an awesome, awesome time just sharing God's word and and God's love and yeah, hanging out with kids. It was fun. So then when I actually had to leave home, it, it was really tough. And because one of my friends from school, her youth group down in Adelaide and our youth group up in the hills, we, um, cause her and my friend and I, we kind of, my friend who went to my youth group, the three of us were thick as thieves at school. And so we often did, like we amalgamated our groups a lot. We did a lot of stuff together. So for me, when I moved to Adelaide, it was just natural that I would start going to her church, which was really good because instead of starting off not knowing anyone, I at least knew, you know, these kids from youth and a couple of their parents, I think I already knew. And yeah, so my first year down Adelaide, I was actually at that particular church, another Lutheran church. Um, I didn't want to stop going to church. God was everything to me and he still is. So for my first year, I went to that church and then she took me, this same girl, took me along to a night youth service at another church, which is now my current church. So anyway, once I'd been to this youth service at this other church that my friend took me to, I just loved it. There was something about that church and the people there. I just had to go. So pretty much from that time onwards, that's where I've been going. Um, I've had my ups and downs with, with this particular church, but you know what, it's my family. And you do have ups and downs with your family. The one thing that's always remained though, is that God has never left me. He's always there. This church is probably, I used to say back oh, like 15, 20 years ago, that that church kind of saved me, but it also, uh, I used to say it was like my savior, but also my demon, which sounds really bad. I probably wouldn't say that anymore. Um, I would just say that like any family, we have ups and downs and I've had my beef with the church at times, but you know what, when it all comes down to it, they're my people we're all one and I know that they love me and that they care about me. I definitely have people there who are like special. I've had, there was a, a Bible study group that really took me under their wing in my early 20s when I was very, very sick with depression. And there were um, the, the pastors and their families also there kept me alive at times. Um, there's this one couple who I've known ever since way back then. And these days, you know, I call them my spiritual parents because that's what I think they are. They're, they're the parents that I always wanted but never had. Um, 
they're just they keep me accountable which I think is really really important but they they will rescue me they've rescued me when my scooter fell in the lake they've rescued me when I've been really sick and needed to go to hospital um, back in my depression days they they've just been there in a way like I say that they have stickability when I was really sick I pushed a lot of people away people from this church did not did not run they just didn't no matter how hard I tried they just did not go and especially this couple they used to say to me we pray for you every night you know Linda and I I mean back then I didn't even like hearing that because I hated myself I hated everyone um, except God he it's funny you know some people say oh, like they go to God when they're in trouble or when they're having bad times I actually don't usually I go to him in the good times it's really weird but I don't know it's yeah I don't know can't explain it but also um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say about that but anyway it'll come back to me <laughs> if it's important um, yeah this this couple they really have they're amazing um, this entire church you know the people who who really took me under their wing back when I was younger in that small group that Bible study group two of them have now passed away which devastates me and the others you know we don't really see each other that much but I think they all know that I'm pretty pretty doing pretty okay these days and you know they don't need to kind of spoon feed me like they did back then when I was really really unwell and ignorant of a lot of stuff so um, I actually lived with the pastor one of the pastors and his family and that was just like an entirely new experience for me like I remember once when one, their four-year-old shut the door and her dad just said to her, thank you so much for doing that without being asked. I'm like, what? He thanked her for shutting a door? In my family, it would have been about bloody time you shut that door. So, you know, you can see how it, it was just completely new. But they pretty much had to bring me up from infancy right through to, you know, 20. When I lived with them, I was 20, 21. And they, because everything I'd learned my entire childhood was just so warped and twisted and, you know, not healthy. Even in my foster family, it was not healthy looking back. And, yeah, I had great times, but it also, yeah, it wasn't the best at a lot of the time. So this family that... I, I boarded with for a year they will forever be special to me every single one of them no matter how long it is in between me seeing them or talking to them they will always hold a place in my heart because to me that's when my life changed for the better you know um, anyway yeah so that pastor and his family they they were just amazing and you know um, they really encouraged my faith. I never, ever stopped believing in God. That's one thing. No matter what has happened to me, and I've had a lot of bad stuff happen, I've never blamed God and I've never run from him. Um, a lot of people would go, why me? Why me? But I've always had the thought that God's got some reason why he wants me to go through this. Either it's a lesson for me to learn it's building my character or I honestly believe a lot of what's happened to me is so that I can be there for other people so I can maybe share my story like this and let others know that they're not alone so I've never blamed him and I just think he has kept me alive numerous times when I've tried to commit suicide and I've not had it easy <laughs> you can tell eh? <laughs> But yeah, I just think God is one of the most faithful people, people, you know, he's not really a person, you know what I mean. He's just the most faithful person in my life. He is so forgiving. He's so comforting. Um, I remember once I actually physically felt his hand on my shoulder when I was being prayed for once. And I'll probably tell you about that in another video because it was pretty full on, but 
I just know that he's real and that he's there for me. I hear his voice, you know, maybe not so much lately because I've been busy doing other things and I'm not as close to him as I once was, but that's changing as well. I'm working on that a lot, you know, because if my relationship with him is not going great, then nothing's gonna go great, basically. That's what I believe. And so I'm really working on that. And, you know, I just know no matter what I'm feeling or how distant I feel from him, my faith in him and my love for him is never going. Um, it's never gonna go. He's just the center. He's the core of my being, the core in my heart. And everything that I do and all my motives stem from him hopefully. <laughs> um, everything I want to do, everything I think, well not everything I think, but you know, I try really hard to live my life according to the Bible, his word, because the Bible is his word. Um, I'll probably talk about that in another video. Um, I don't know. I, I don't quite know how to say how amazing he is. All I know is that God has kept me from a lot of danger in my life um, by listening to his voice and understanding when it's his voice. He has really saved me from some bad situations. Um, and he's also put me into some bad situations in order to be there for others and I'm actually really grateful for that because it's just more growing and more learning and you know I'm a bit of a sponge I love learning whatever it is unless it's mathematical because that is over my head I do not get maths so apart from that I you know I'm a sponge and especially when it comes to my Lord Jesus I just love anything to do with him and I try to live my life by him and by what he sets out in his Bible. It does mean these days life is harder because I'm in a minority in today's society with, you know, a lot of different issues. And um, so I think it's just going to get harder. But do you know what? It doesn't matter because I know that God's with me and he's never going to leave me. And no matter how hard it gets, no matter how much crap I get for my beliefs, doesn't I really, I really don't care. Um, it does bother me, but then I have people to help me get through it, like my spiritual parents, my best friend, my brother, you know. And I have a whole church full of people that if I need to, I can pretty much run to any of them. And I know that I'm going to be accepted and loved and, yeah, it's really that's that's what God is that's what faith is faith in action and that's what God's family is and if you're missing out on family then I really really urge you to go find a church home somewhere where you feel you can trust others and where you just feel comfortable and most importantly where you feel safe safe emotionally safe spiritually safe mentally it's just the most important thing and then you will find that you never want to leave that because you know I've had really crappy family most of my life and I feel like Mike and I have kind of had to find our own family and the best place to look for that is in church. Church is not the be all and end all so long as you've got God, Jesus, Holy Spirit but you know what going to a church you are surrounded by mini Jesuses, people who just shine his light no matter what. And so when you need a hug from God and you really need a physical hug from him, there's a whole church full of people to get that from, which is so comforting. It's just the best. So anyway, I've really talked and talked and talked and I'm sorry, this is really long. There's so much more I could have said about God and my faith and my relationship with him. But but I'm going to, you know, spend some time making videos about this entire topic and person. And I would love for you to watch them, especially if you're searching. And, you know, write comments in the, in the comments below. Write comments and let me know what you're needing, what you're thinking, what you're feeling or what you're searching for. 
because I guarantee any other I won't say that I guarantee that Jesus will find Jesus will be the one that gives you what you're looking for I can guarantee it it might take you a while to to get that but you know what any relationship takes time to work and having a relationship with Jesus is the same as any other relationship it takes time but he will love you he already does love you no matter what he loves you right now so you know yeah if you have questions or anything write in the right below and I will hopefully be able to answer them and if I can't then I will find out the answers just one last thing before I go you might be wondering about my memo boards um, the the pink one I actually want to try and do a special Bible verse that relates to whatever I'm talking about each each vlog so why is this one so special to me this one is special because this is the the first Bible verse that I really read that told me that I was actually chosen and adopted by God um, you know I talked earlier about how Jesus was like my brother and God being his father also means he's my father um, and having been in foster home to foster home to foster home and being rejected so much in my life having having this guy who chose me and adopted me like no one can take that away I've had so much family taken away I've even had people who've said oh your family to me you're my daughter and then they've dumped me like a hot potato you know I've had that happen a few times and no matter what nobody nobody on this planet can take away the fact that I am God's daughter his child he chose me and he adopted me and I'm one of his now which is really cool and you know same with my brother and anyway so this is why it's such an important verse to me in Ephesians I've um I've actually paraphrased it here so I would really encourage you to go through and go find a Bible and read the full verse because it's pretty amazing some of it you might not understand if you're not used to Bible language but some of it you know basically you'll get the gist of it and if you don't understand write it in the comments below cool all right well um, I would love for you to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already that would be awesome okay thanks bye